Hey everyone, it's Sarah Whitfer, and this is our last ADHC talk of this spring 2023 semester. I am so excited about today. Um, we are joined by Carrie Hill, who is the Digital Scholarship Librarian at Auburn University Libraries. And Carrie is going to talk about an archive of one's own. Um, super excited to hear about her fan fiction project and um, uh, I have some things that I was going to say but I can't remember what they are because I always forget when I'm introducing people but Carrie I'm going to turn this over to you and let you take off from here. Awesome thank you Sarah. Um, so just starting out, uh, just thank you for letting me speak today. And I just want to preface this by saying I have not talked about this publicly a lot. So I really welcome feedback um, from folks uh, because it'll be helpful in uh, preparing this for future use and publication. So we'll start with that. Um, so just as we get started, you know, you might be wondering why study fan fiction? Why, what led you to researching this? Well, this really, it comes out of my master's thesis and why I did for that. And when we were preparing to pick our topics, develop our research questions, our advisor said to pick something we can live lit with for a long while without getting fed up with it. And as somebody who has been a part of fan communities since my like tween and teen years, I thought, you know what, the, this is a topic that I can live with for the duration of my master's program and not get tired of it. Um, I had also found a paper exploring fan information behaviors, and I thought, well, that fits me really well. <laughs> um, also, it gave me a chance to really contribute to new and different research. Um, I felt like there were a lot of topics I could pick that were sort of safe. Um, you know, there's there's lots to, to talk about there, lots of things to cite, but I, uh, I thought it would be cool to do something that was part of just a whole emerging field uh, or subfield of LIS research. And then practically, um, you know, I was doing this during the height of the pandemic. So we were, I was developing this topic in fall of 2020. Um, so I needed something that I, didn't have to get IRB approval for. I wanted to not rely on surveys in a time when everyone's stress levels were immensely high. So doing something that was in a way firmly within my wheelhouse with just programming and looking at fan fiction seemed like the right way to go trying to get master's work done in a time like that. <laughs> so, all right, going into this. Okay. So my original goal was to try and figure out, are tagging behaviors similar across fandom user groups or do different tagging uh, dialects sort of emerge? So um, I wanted to see if it was reasonable to assume that tagging behaviors are similar or not. Um, but, and by analyzing that, uh, the way that fan writers describe their works when posting them online for others to find, I thought we could gain insight into the way that non-librarian readers and writers conceive of how their work should be categorized. Um, so while designing a study with that goal in mind, though, I realized we had a need for a standardized system uh, for researchers of different fandoms to categorize tags. So currently, studies that code and organize fan tags uh, commonly build their own coding schema for analyzing characteristics of that tag set. But developing a standard taxonomy would enable us to readily compare tag data across studies from multiple fandoms and platforms, and it would potentially reduce the time required to conduct a study uh, by eliminating that need for every researcher to induce their own coding schema. So prior work had been done to develop a fan tag taxonomy. So, you know, I didn't feel like I had to reinvent the wheel, I wanted to build on what Ludi Price had already done. <clears throat> so um, that taxonomy had yet to be tested on a fandom outside of the one for which she developed it. So for this study, I applied her taxonomy to another fandom, 
uh, to explore its application outside of the Marvel comic universe. And within that, I originally sought to answer four questions. So to what extent does Price's taxonomy translate to use in a new fandom? How does tag expression vary between those two fandoms? Um, at what points does the taxonomy fail to describe tags in a new fandom, if there are any? And what changes might need to be made to develop that taxonomy for pan fandom use? So the rationale behind investing all of this effort to study the way that fan taggers organize their work presumes that information organization is highly influenced by culture. So these researchers, Bowker and Starr, sort of did the uh, did a seminal work on this. Um, and through their examination of a variety of classification systems, um, they found that classification systems, all of them, inevitably express a point of view on the materials they organize. So by imposing categories of classification, a system expresses assumptions that creators of the classification system have made about their world. So for example, um, in another study, a researcher, uh, Olson, points out that Library of Congress subject headings specifically list a category computers and women, but they give no corresponding category for men. And this implicitly expresses a view of those classifiers that computing is associated by default with men and not with women. So each choice made in the design of taxonomies and ontologies inherently valorizes one point of view and silences another. There are some alternatives to top-down information organization structure, structures um, that seek to solve that problem of imposing the worldview of designers by generating taxonomies or by generating organization structures from the bottom up instead of from the top down. Um, so one solution, uh, which is creating a folksonomy through social tagging, it, it seems to offer some solutions to the problems identified there, but it presents some new ones as well. So on sites like Archive of Our Own, tags let users filter this vast amount of content in uh, the fan fiction collection by letting users only see content marked with their selected tag. Uh, so that process of organization through user-generated tags uh, has been referred to by multiple names like social tagging, collaborative tagging, collective tagging, but all of those refer to the same thing, which is just publicly labeling and categorizing resources in a shared online environment. So user tags result in this body of tags that describe the collection, which has been referred to as a folksonomy uh, since that term was coined um, back in 2005. And that word plays on folks and taxonomy to embody the bottom-up classification system built by users through tagging. And it sort of represents the antithesis of a top-down taxonomy um, imposed by subject specialist. Uh, through this talk, you might find it interesting that I am talking about imposing a taxonomy on a folksonomy. Um, there, I just want to sort of point out, mention, like, um, while the folksonomy I recognize is very useful for, um, you know, people being able to find works and discover them in different ways, for the purpose of research, um, having one system that everybody uses um, can make makes it easier for us to all categorize things the same way. Um, and I, but I don't want to say that one researcher should come up with that taxonomy. I think it's a thing that we need to work through together, which also, um, you know, is very much in the ethos of pan fan communities, right? Um, so yeah, anyway, side note. <laughs> um, but yeah, so folksonomies provide this way to organize information in collections that are way too large for any one cataloger or even a team of catalogers to index uh, by spreading that work of organization among the users of the information system. So while other methods of organization, such as like controlled vocabularies we use to classify works in a library, provide consistency and arguably more precise recall, they also require costly expert design and the requirement to train indexing labor. 
They also suffered from a slow response to changes in user vocabularies and shifts in the collection, which folksonomies incorporate immediately. Um, while folksonomy enthusiasts may see them as this revolutionary organization system that allows users to find items in their chosen vocabulary and uh, a system that sort of challenges that traditional meta narrative that respects a single authoritative voice, uh, folksonomies still suffer from some inherent flaws that have been documented in a number of uh, studies. Um, you know, the main failings tend to recur throughout those. So uh, issues of synonymy, polysemy, um, word form variations, different depths of description, uh, misspelt tags and single use tags that have little meaning to the rest of the community. Um, additionally, though it's tempting to view tax folksonomies as democratically decided organization systems, they really aren't. Um, the folksonomy is a result of many individual decisions, not the reaching of a group consensus by users. So the same minority worldviews that are silenced in traditional classification systems can be silenced when they're just overwhelmed by the mass of tags created by a majority of users in the systems. So one of those very flaws that folksonomies might aim to you know, fix, reinforcing majority, namely reinforcing major, majority worldviews at the cost of differing perspectives, um, they might be as prevalent <clears throat> in that organization system as in traditional classification systems. So <clears throat> while there have been numerous computational approaches uh, to try and address those problems, um, the way that it's handled on archive of our own, um, which um, one researcher calls a, a curated folksonomy, um, introduces a human-based solution instead. So <clears throat> in a curated folksonomy, the aggregate tags produced by the users are a starting point. And then system experts employ the decision-making um, to identify and remedy problems of synonymy and uh, homographs. So users create tags and a human or a group of humans can bind synonymous tags and differentiate homographic tags, which should help the system improve recall and precision. So um, that should allow for the creation of an organization system that balances increasing findability with the improvement of the experience um, for even relatively small groups of users. So, um, you know, thinking about the way that uh, information systems, you know, express these systems of power inherently, um, this can be a way to alleviate that because Bullard's research on the complex decision that these tag wranglers are making found that the human workers were making decisions regarding tag merging or differentiation based on factors including respect for historic oppression and the avoidance of enacting ongoing forms of harm and oppression. So while some decisions made by those workers are not the best decisions in terms of precision and recall, they improve the inclusivity of minor user views in a way that unregulated folksonomies or algorithmically produced ones don't. So yeah, um, so this, like I said, this uh, looks at the information behaviors of fan authors and archivists. And to do that, I looked at an online fan fiction archive created and run by the Organization for Transformative Works, uh, which is a nonprofit organization run by and for fans to produce, to provide access to and preserve the history of fan works and fan cultures. And that is called Archive of Our Own. Uh, so I'm gonna interrupt you for a moment. Sure. I think we're having slide problems. Is it slide problems? everybody? Are you having problems, Sarah? Yeah, I noticed that as well. Like it's like they're like kind of layered over each other. So yeah, they're Ooh. not advancing properly. I'm not really sure gotcha. what's happening. So it like I really apologize. No, that's okay. Um, hmm. So the animation is not. Wait, okay. So what are y'all seeing? 
Are y'all seeing um, sort so of- So there's like our... the text from your first slide layered over and the headings are all layered and there's gaps and oh, like weird, weird pixels weird. of- weird. Yeah, weird as you funny. move your mouse, I'm getting like some weird pixelation. Oh yeah, now we see- your Now I see, slide. yeah. It's like, it's like holdovers from the old slide. We don't know. I've never seen this problem happen before. I'm sure you've never mm -hmm. experienced mm -hmm. this. I don't even know what's going on, but now we can see the slide that you have. Oh, yeah. We were stuck on a, a previous slide and I could tell you were advancing them. And I was like, but they're not changing. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> but it is now. So you yes. see information behaviors and then yes. a box that says mm -hmm. archive of our own. Yes. yes. Okay. I'm really sorry to interrupt no, you. No, that's weird, but I'm glad that you mentioned it. Um, okay, so it's, but it's fixed now. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, that archive uh, was released as an open beta in 2009, but it is, and it has grown significantly since then. So as of 2022, when I pulled this screen cap, they had more than 4.9 or they had more than 5 million users and um nearly a billion works right is that i'm reading that correctly yeah wait. Mm -hmm. yeah nearly a billion works um in the collection and that's only grown since then again this screen cap was grabbed in like october of last year so there, yeah, there's a lot out there. <laughs> um, so works are organized according to the tags that their author assigns when it's uploaded. Um, but users can also assign tags to works that they bookmark. And that can help the user find work among the collections of work that they've already bookmarked. Um, but it does not appear next to the work for all other users in the archive. And for my study, I looked at the tags that authors decided to place next to works. Um, can you now see, um, a, no, nothing changed. Mm -mm. Okay. That's weird. Now, now I'm getting like weird layers of things again. So I see wearing so your clothes. The oh, well now, no, now, now it makes, now well, I'm seeing information behaviors of fan authors and the screenshot from before and now I'm seeing over it wearing your clothes by Starbuck lover x-files yes okay that's, an that's, what, that's what I should be okay <laughs> um, yeah no, so now, now a, it yeah. actually for a minute it did it looked weird but now it looks now now I can see that it's intentional <laughs> gotcha. okay good deal all right good lesson this I need to include less animations more each separate slide doing its thing, I, I think might be the problem that's coming mm. from this. Um, okay. Uh, do, do, do. So, um, so yeah, like Price, I focused on the tags created by writers, but a similar study by a guy named, or by, I think a man named Guy Hagen, examined tags created by AO3 readers when bookmarking works and explored those cultural dynamics that are at play in a systems where writers can see those reader bookmarks um, and they can provide sort of a hidden feedback system. Um, so that's just sort of an interesting example of how, you know, examining these behaviors from different perspectives uh, can provide cool different insights. So um, AO3 describes five types of tags that authors can use to describe their works. Um, so these are classes that are imposed by AO3. Uh, media tags, fandom tags, characters, and within characters, we have relationships, and then additional tags follow after that. So can you see my pointer on the slide now? Okay, so uh, yes, fandom tag. Um, the media tag is hidden in this view because it just is assumed we're in TV. Um, if we were to go to fandoms and try to browse, um, the fandoms are organized by what type of media it is. Um, doo -doo -doo. Then we have characters. So Fox Mulder and Dana Scully would be that here. Relationships. So Fox Mulder and Dana Scully indicates a friendship relationships where Fox Mulder slash Dana Scully indicates a romantic pairing. Um, and then we have some additional tags here. So we've got angst with a happy ending, angst, mid-canon, slut-shaming in office rumors, oh my, 
<laughs> so I, I just felt like this was a good example of how those tags can be both descriptive of the work and also uh, dialogic. So giving us some communication of what the author is thinking and um, wanting to, to show you with that. Um, so yeah, in this system, like I said, tag wranglers wrangle user-generated tags into canonical tag uh, to reduce issues of synonymy that occur with folksonomies. So um, the stated goal of that is not to change how authors have tagged their works, but to standardize those canon tags and synonym relationships as much as possible. So it doesn't affect how a tag appears beside a work, but it rather creates a relationship that directs search and filtering features on the site to treat the author's tag as the canonical or wrangled tag when preserve, while preserving the author's original tag text. Um, but still tag wrangling likely affects writer choices when tagging their works because canonical tags are suggested via autocomplete as the writer types. So, um, you know, as that writer types Fox Mulder, the capitalized, oops, the capitalized, you know, the properly capitalized uh, capital F Fox capital M Mulder is gonna autocomplete and suggest that. So where the author might've originally just been typing all lowercase, it, um, it'll auto suggest that, which may affect um, that writer's choice when they're tagging it. Um, so it, it would be reasonable to assume that a higher degree of variation in tag spelling, word order, and capitalization would exist among AO3 tags in the absence of that autocomplete function. But going on, um, so yeah, Price's taxonomy, which you can see a wide view of here, um, and hopefully a more narrowed in view will follow when I do this. There we go. Um, nope, mm -mm, it didn't. No. Okay. What if we go there and then go back? Will it show you? No. It's like sort of, but not very. Okay. What? Okay. Is it showing you like? It's it's just showing like, like I can see that you tried to like pop up the boxes, but the old boxes from previous slides are still there and the new ones are not. There. That's yeah. so weird. Why That's, is it that super happening? weird? Oh, okay. You know what? Then I'm just going to go to this slide where nothing is in the way. Um, and and try to go from there. Um, so Price's taxonomy expanded one that was uh, made back in the early 2000s to describe um, tags on um, things like Flickr um, and, oh. and sites like that. Um, but she expanded it into a lot of different subtypes so that um, you could more accurately apply it to uh, the fandom context. Um, and so that we would, it would tease out those um, fandom specific behaviors. So um, for this study, I sought to test that on a new fandom. Um, she analyzed tags occurring on works uh, tagged Romy, which is a portmanteau of the character names Rogue and Lemmy, Remy LeBeau, aka Gambit from the Marvel comic universe. And it's used to refer to the romantic relationship between those characters. Uh, so Price notes that she decided to analyze works tagged Romy because it's a relatively small fandom that's easier to navigate than, you know, say the Harry Potter fandom, which would be <laughs> huge. <laughs> um, and because her experience as a longtime fan of the Marvel universe and more specifically of the Romy ship uh, would reduce the time needed to research tag meanings and would improve coding accuracy. Um, so fandom specific terminology can be exceedingly difficult to decipher for those who are not also members of the fandom. And um, that's like another reason for wanting this standardized system of coding, because it would be very hard for me to go and try to code Romy tags accurately. Um, so comparing our data is really only possible if you have one study where you have like a big group of different fandom researchers that are all working together in that study, or if in your separate studies, you all use the same system. 
Um, so that's, again, why I'm trying to help create this taxonomy. So um, I decided to analyze tags from works on AO3 that have the relationship tag uh, Sam Carter slash Jack O'Neill, indicating a romantic relationship between the characters Samantha Carter and Jack O'Neill from the show Stargate SG-1. Um, so when Price performed her, performed her crawl, um, she would have scraped tags from, from approximately 285 works uh, when searching Remy, Le Le Remy LeBeau slash Rogue. Um, when I was doing my study, a search for works tagged Sam Carter slash Jack O'Neill yielded approximately 4,923 results. So because of time constraints and the limitation of performing the study alone, uh, I had to narrow that down. So I just scraped tags um, within the first 50 pages of results with crossover fix excluded because I didn't want to run into tags that I could not code because of lack of fandom knowledge. Um, and I sorted by hits because I uh, wanted, I reasoned that frequently accessed works, maybe those that are the most discoverable, uh, perhaps indicating that they've been well tagged. So um, while that could have unintentionally favored works in even the first paid favored older works that had been in the archive longer, even in the first page of results, uh, we had eight of those having last been updated since 2018, eight of 20. Um, and the third most access work at the time was completed only three months before data were scraped. So newer works don't seem to have been totally deprivileged by choosing that. So from here, we shouldn't have a ton more issues with boxes and things like that. Um, so hopefully you're all seeing uh, just like a table with occurrence counts and uh, percentages. Uh, but yeah, so I used Python to write the script that requested HTML files um, and then parsed uh, those files so that I would get um, the tag, the tag's fic title, uh, the author username, and their AO3 assigned tag class. Um, so while I didn't use title and author username in the analysis, they did let me sort and resort tags as I analyzed so that I could look at each tag both in an aggregate or in the context of other tags on the same work. Because sometimes tags that provide author commentary, uh, they might not make sense when separated from their work and viewed in an alphabetized list of tags, but their meaning is clearer when viewed in the context of the work it appears on AO3. So, you know, thinking back to that example a couple slides ago, you know, if those two dialogic tags were separated from one another, they might not make a lot of sense, but when you view them together on the work, they do. Um, so first I coded each tag by type and subtype according to the taxonomy. Um, and the taxonomy originally described the granularity of fan tags she found on Tumblr, Etsy, and AO3. And she defined 11 subtypes of descriptive tags, three of resource tags, two of ownership tags, and five types of opinion tags that you can see here. Um, so I, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting that even though I had a thousand works that I was working with and uh, Price had 285, I only had 2000 more tags, uh, which is uh, sort of interesting. Um, but, but yeah, so this just shows the number of times a type of tag occurred and um, what percentage that represents within its corresponding tag set. So when we look at that um, compared side by side, we can see that descriptive tags are employed most often in both fandoms by an overwhelming margin. <laughs> um, when collecting data, I chose to exclude crossovers, like I mentioned. Um, so this first um, photo shows um, just all of the subtypes included, but I decided to also look at it with fandom excluded because, um, you know, that could, uh, it, it could muddy the results of trying to compare because of course she's going to have a lot more fandom tags than mine 
because there was only one fandom. So I just wanted to compare only the categories that we both had used. Um, so um, in that sort of comparison, you can see that the Romy tags only changed slightly um, when we reduced fandoms, at least at the type level. Um, uh, let's see, descriptive tag use drops a little bit and um, corresponding uh, re resource opinion, task organizing and plan performance increase by just a little bit. So at the tag type level, the relative frequencies of tag use remain similar regardless of if we're looking at fandom inclusion or exclusion. Um, yeah. So descriptive tags are used slightly more in the Sam Jack tag set than in Romy and conversely resource opinion and plan performance are used slightly more often among Romy tags than Sam Jack. Um, so yeah, at the subtype level before excluding fandom tags, we can see that Romy tags are coded as fandom, ship, friendship, organization slash team slash group, <laughs> location, citation, and explanatory more often than in the Sam Jack tag set. And conversely, character, genre, plot, and warning tags occur more frequently among Sam Jack tags than among Romy tags. However, when we exclude fandom tags, the occurrence of character tags relatively increases pretty notably um, to surpass the occurrence of that tag subtype in the Sam Jack data set. Uh, so at this level, the occurrence of tags coded descriptive, event, person, location, resource, fan work, title of fan work, ownership, creator source, um, and several others is so infrequent that it's not visible on most visualizations. So uh, those are effectively excluded. Um, they just, they sort of barely occur <clears throat> among AO3 tags. Um, in both tag sets, character tags occur most often followed by ship tags, uh, which makes sense given that every work in this data contains at least one ship tag, Romy or Sam Jack. Um, for Romy tags, including or excluding fandom tags, affects the order of the top three most common tag subtypes. And when included, fandom tags appear as the third most frequently uh, coded Romy tag subtype. But when excluded, ship and character subtypes both increase propor proportionally, and plot also increases slightly. But no other ones are notably affected. Um, and this is sort of them together. So, um, yeah, with this uh, da, da, da. genre and warning tag current stand out most different, most notably to differentiate the Sam Jack tag set from the Romy tag set, um, with both subtypes coded much more commonly among Sam Jack tags. While descriptive tags are the most used tag type in both Marvel and Stargate SG-1 fandoms, the most commonly used subtypes varies a lot, um, or it varies. I don't know if we want to say a lot, um, but character tags are a higher percentage of the Romy tag set. Um, and that could be because there are more distinct named characters in the Marvel universe than the Stargate universe. So the Stargate franchise has about three major shows, a cartoon, a mini series, and some tie-in books. But the Marvel franchise has been producing comics in a number of distinct series since 1939, had released 23 movies by 2021 when I did this, um, had produced 11 TV series by 2021, uh, where in contrast, each of Stargate's three shows focuses on a team of four to eight main characters, along with a small ensemble of supporting characters and villains. So while there's only a slightly higher usage of character tags in the Romy data set, uh, ship tags occur uh, much more commonly. So um, about twice as much uh, where ship tags make up about 30% of the Romy tags where they only make up 13% of Sam Jack tags indicating that there are more re romantic relationships tagged among Romy works. So if we consider the fact that 
The Romy tag set represents approximately 285 works and contains 2,172 ship tags. Um, while the Sam Jack data set <laughs> represents 1,000 works and contains 1,332 ship tags, <laughs> we can see like each work in the data set occurs at least once. So among the selected Sam Jack fix, additional romantic pairings occur about 332 times. While among the Romy fix, additional romantic pairings occur 1,887 times. <laughs> Um, that existence of more total characters uh, could account for that, but it could also be um, an indication of different choices made by the authors in um, just how much they decide to include, uh, who all they decide to focus on. So it would be really interesting to see a comparison of the number of relationship tags that occur on each work. So, you know, if 100% of them have one, what percentage of works in each set have two ship tags or three ship tags, et cetera. Um, but that couldn't be deduced from the current study because it wasn't a goal of our original collection. Um, but yeah, do, do, do. So yeah, we see those peaks in genre and plot in the Stargate SG-1 fan. And with that, we have to wonder, you know, it seems really unlikely that there would be fewer genres or story elements represented among like all of those Marvel works than among the Stargate SG-1 fandoms. Um, in fact, Price's Scrape produced twice as many distinct tag names despite the scrape in this study collecting about 2000 more total tags. Um, in the in my coding, the genre type includes expected tags like humor, angst, or in her in her coding, um, genre type includes expected tags like humor, angst, and romance, but it also includes tags like voyeurism. Um, and as previously mentioned, I tried to tag as or I tried to code as closely as possible to her coding decisions based on examples I could see in her work. And voyeurism is clearly marked as a genre tag in one of her co-occurrence uh, graphs. I would have coded voyeurism and tags like it as a story element being a plot item um, because I see that as descriptive more of a plot point in a work than an entire genre. So even when trying to model coding after her examples, it's inherently subjective. Uh, tags may fit in multiple categories and one coder's judgment call can vary from another's. But I believe that a more robust dictionary for training would improve agreement greatly. Um, both fandoms express more opinions that explain pot, plot points than convey feelings, but in bookmarking tags, that could be different. Um, Guy Hagen found that AO3 bookmarks contain affective communication more prominently than anything else. So a study comparing bookmark tags and author tags could be really interesting, especially if we're all using the same system to code um, and can really compare those results well. Um, but yeah, so, um, th that's just sort of the, the raw, the findings, um, the last interesting sort of finding I want to point out is that there's only a slightly higher usage of play and performance tags in Romy works. Um, and those tags indicate events and competitions like Sam Jack Shipmas 2020, where authors celebrate Christmas by writing works for each other that revolve around Sam and Jack celebrating the holiday together. Um, so they're therefore a tag type where we can compare the degree of community building activity present in each fandom. Um, though it would make sense for there to be a lot more events and competitions generated among members of a fandom consisting of millions of comic book readers and moviegoers, than the fandom of a cult hit sci-fi show that last produced new show content 20 years ago. <laughs> um, the tag data indicate a similar degree of communal activity within each fandom. Um, and that tag Sam Jack Shipmas uh, 2020 indicates that there was a degree of community engagement happening in December, 2020. So although the source content of Stargate SG-1 is a lot older with no recent releases to spark increased fan activity, 
it's possible that fan activity may have seen a spike during the pandemic as people were increasingly seeking ways to connect with one another through online events where we would be safe from disease transmission. Yeah, so conclusions. What did all of those findings, what, what were the main things? Um, both fandoms most often use tags to describe their works for readers. Um, the tagging practices seem broadly similar between the two fandoms, but more work needs to be done to prepare a, a taxonomy for pan fandom use. So like I was mentioning with genre and story element being really difficult um, to differentiate between, um, but it's seeming unlikely that there would actually be more genres present in her data than mine. Um, I think that indicates that we need a little bit more prep work done. Um, additionally, um, you know, there were, while I could, fit most of my tags into the categories established by price, there were some uh, that really did not work. So uh, one type of character relationship, members of the same family, didn't have a category that fit it well. Those relationships wouldn't be a ship, which describes romantic relationships between character, but they're also different from friendship, you know? Um, so there may need while there may be no need for a category of tags describing family relationships in works filtered by Romy, there are several relationships in the Tar Stargate fandom that need that distinction. So a family subtype of descriptive tag, um, I believe should be added to make the taxonomy more useful across fandoms. Um, but regardless of our questions of intercoder reliability, both studies clearly indicate that fan writers are more deeply descriptive of their works than current library discovery systems allow. Significant overlap of genre slash story element tags appearing in both studies may indicate a high prevalence of new ways that writers think of categorizing their works for readers to find. Uh, while those categories may be new, their existence in literature is almost certainly not. Um, Today's readers might be able to find more literature that appeals to them if those new categories were applied to the traditionally published works that a user would find in libraries and bookstore, since popular tags like angst, fluff, family, hurt, comfort, relationship, and mental health issues can describe works of classic literature as easily as they do fan fiction. So why does it all matter? Like I mentioned, the best way to organize information changes as cultures change. And culture among readers and writers is changing with um, the growth of platforms like Wattpad and AO3, even Goodreads that make that relationship more of a two-way street of communication than the traditional author providing to the readers without seeing feedback in real time. Um, so, it would be interesting to do more study on these things because uh, it would be great from a librarian standpoint to see what it, the insights we find can tell us about um, how to make organized materials more discoverable for readers. Um, so that is what I've prepared. Thank you uh, for letting me speak. And we have a bit more time left uh, for questions. So I would be really happy to hear questions or feedback um, to, yeah, to make this better. Thanks for this, Carrie. This has just been so fun. Um, I think one of the things that I'm constantly have in the back of my mind as I'm hearing you talk is the way that I see our current generation of undergraduates try to search mm -hmm. you know and this is very indicative of the ways that they think about search terms and findability and discoverability of information and so I think you are right about the implications for um sort of understanding this from a, a, a library's perspective and figuring out how to leverage it um I also and thinking that, and this is just a, a sort of an observation and my own like desire for findability, but I think about 
um, the fact that my Kindle is really hard to navigate, <laughs> right? Like mm -hmm. my kid will wake up in the middle of the night and come and take my Kindle and read, like he'll open up like 10 books. Mm -hmm. And then the book that I'm reading disappears somewhere into it. And there's no way to like, <laughs> other than adding it to a collection, there's, there's like no way to, it would be really nice to have a tagging system there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just thinking about like the whole bottom up tagging and bookmarking system. It, right. you know, I think about the way that we do it in Zotero. I think about the way that we do it. You know, I was a huge, um, delicious user. I don't yes. know if anyone else remembers delicious, but oh my God, I miss mm -hmm. it every day. Um, so yeah, that actually, um, when the term folksonomy was coined in 2005, that is a site that Vanderwall was studying, uh, you know, particularly. And Delicious is also where Smith developed the original taxonomy um, that Price based hers off of. Um, it was yeah. it was a big one that first had a lot of social tagging and people, um, you know, doing collections like to be read, you know, right. Stuff like that mm -hmm. right um so one of or two things um I don't know if I maybe missed it because I was talking to a student so I had to mute this for a minute um so I, I missed like the middle section um but have you looked at um book talk already um so not as a part of like this study um I, this was just on AO3 um because okay. also uh I was doing this in 2021 okay, okay. I wasn't okay. as much on TikTok at the time so um, like yeah on book talk you know um yeah I've seen some cool applications uh for that in terms of like reader recommendation and categorizing things in libraries, um, just at my own public library, I've seen like a um, the big hits on book talk display oh, yeah, yeah. where you know somebody There's had this yeah. like notion of playlists. Mm -hmm. um, that I think has really been imported from uh, like how much of a regular part. I think especially the upcoming generation that like Spotify plays a role in like mm -hmm. these user supported playlists as a way of content sharing. Um, and I think I see that less on AO3, less on fanfic.net and more on sites that are, that host like image based uh, content. So like, but manga sites regularly use these sort of like mini library playlists that are user created and tagged in that way um, mm -hmm. to cycle through content. And I don't know, I don't know if that's useful, um, but I like, I don't know, it's very uh, intuitive mm -hmm. the way it's built. And I think that Book Talk leans into that formatting a lot of the time because it enables you to create playlists. So like, especially like larger book talk influencers will have playlists like dedicated mm -hmm. to genre or dedicated mm -hmm. to tags, right? Like hurt and comfort or mm -hmm. uh, sh certain ships and things like that. And I don't know, I feel like it makes it really easy. It makes it a lot easier to access what you're looking for. Um, those, those playlist formats. I don't know why I haven't, I haven't done enough research on it, but it is something, um, yeah, like just, it's like not grouping by genre. So it's real weird, but it's interesting and might be helpful for you. I don't know. Yeah, no, that is, that's really interesting. Um, because some of the, um, some of the research that I looked into a lot for this, um, was, uh, Feinberg's research on like personalized collections and how um, in those collections, you really see the point of view of the collector um, being expressed by how they categorize things. Um, so even just uh, the idea of 
you know, this collector sees this work as this thing primarily. Um, so like, you know, them saying, oh, primarily hurt comfort is what's important. Um, it doesn't matter if it's um, an adventure genre, a romance genre, um, a family fic, the important thing that you want to pull out is hurt comfort. Um, uh, I think it's cool how the playlist format allows you to connect with other, um, you know, collectors who are interested in the same primary thing. And, you know, in, in that playlist format, you almost get their ranking too of like, oh, this is what I see as the top, um, you know, this is the first one you should read and, you know, going down through that list. So that is, that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, and that would be complex uh, social network almost in its own mm -hmm. weird way. Um, but it's, I don't know, there's like, uh, it's like selling, not selling for monetary value, but like presenting your curation mm -hmm. has become really commonplace in a really unique way. And that's like, what is a library? But like, you know, it's, it's a lot of curating, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, it's no longer gate kept in a way, like beholden by universities or infrastructure because it's all, it's like, this is all digital curation. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I think like, you know, people become influencers off of their curation, which is insane. Uh, that's none of it's like some, like if they're a writer or not, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, sorry. Oh yeah. No, I, I follow accounts. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of, but yeah, the, the guy's an influencer based just off of, you know, the books that he pulls together and that, you know, is having me thinking, wow, you know, library work does not make a lot of money, but maybe, <laughs> maybe I should go be a book influencer instead, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, apply curation that way. <laughs> um, it makes me well, think, I think about like, like the Oh, go ahead, Sarah. Oh, well, I was just going to say, like, I think, you know, kind of in reference to that, like, I think that in, on AO3, like, cause you, like you mentioned, like, kind of re like separating out user bookmarks, mm -hmm. um, but also, right, like you can have, I'm pretty sure it's been a while since I poked, since I like played on AO3, but I'm pretty sure like you can search things by bookmarks, you can filter by bookmarks, yes. you can look at like, and there are like, different ways to do collaborative collections I'm not sure how like prevalent they are but there is some like you know other kinds of curation that are happening mm -hmm. um and definitely like there are sort of you know like groups of people who like will form a you know form a group to put their collections together like and you can right you can like put another writer's work in your collection because you are you know curious so like there, there's there, like like I'm I'm wondering about how and I was like because like as a user like I, I book talk doesn't totally do it for like I find it actually hard I heard I find it hard to find things again like see I'm mm -hmm. like oh yeah that sounds really cool and then I'm like but where is that playlist and what was that thing and like I can't like you know so like like I think that there are ways that that's also you know I don't know. Like I'm, I, I was just thinking, Lena, about like what you were saying. It's like yeah, no, it's, that no, is such totally a, right. it is such a, it is such a like. But I was like, I was like, oh, I'm showing my, like, I interact with this stuff, and Ao3, right, is such like a, it's such a millennial sort of thing, in in its in the way that it's like people are thinking about it and putting it together. This is clearly an offshoot of Live Journal and, yeah, um, you know, fanfiction.net. Fan fiction yeah, or, Tumblr, yeah. you know, it's like mm -hmm. those spaces where like, you know, and so the, the thing about book talk, I think is probably at least as much about just me being less comfortable with that sort of format and, you know. No, I mean, you're uh, totally right. I like, and mm -hmm. I think the, the difference there is, uh, I'm going to lean on comp pedagogy terms, but they probably mm -hmm. outside of my field here, um, is that book talk is almost like an inquiry based research style or methodology mm -hmm. like seeking something you have to like mm. it, I don't know I, 
Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. Like, and also like, you know, like what I think I like the well the what I'm usually if I'm on TikTok, I'm, you know, probably looking for interested in something other than like that's not where I'm going for my book recommendations, right? Yeah. And so And there are there are in case you want to try it more, there's uh there's definitely sub genres of book talk. Like Mm-hmm. It's not like book talk is just the the archway right and then right yeah like right. if you have a thing like if you like it it's it's like if you I'm not gonna say I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head right this second but like if you want if if they were doing just fan fiction curation on book talk right yeah you could, would probably be able to seek out her comfort playlists of good mm-hmm. like for just that genre and then dial it down into the fandom as well um by Mm -hmm. curtailing your algorithm by the content that you're following Mm -hmm. um but that's the weird thing there's not I don't feel like there's I think that the algorithm on and maybe that's what I was trying to get to the algorithm on book talk or on tiktok not tiktok um is far more uh, predatory, I guess, than mm-hmm. like the algorithm you would find on AO3. And one is specifically seeking a capitalist venture that is mm-hmm. doing other mm-hmm. thing, whereas the other one, like they're for two different, completely different right. markets. But yeah. But so that issue that we were getting into at the beginning of like organization systems, you know, serving power structures, yeah. um, like those majority views are going to be really privileged on book talk because people, um, yeah. you know, more people are going to be interested. So they're going to be shown to more people yeah. where mm-hmm. you get a little bit of a leveling of that on AO3, where mm-hmm. um, when you search for a tag, um, you can sort it by hits, kudos, the date it appeared, you know, things like that, but you're Mm going to see everybody's, you're not going to have, Mm -hmm. you know, accounts that, um, and I'll stop sharing so that we're all just talking heads. (laughs) Um, uh, you're not going to have accounts that are like privileged over others where you have like an Mm -hmm. influence or where theirs are always going to show up. Um, and it's going to be more, um, a little bit more equalized that way. Um, yeah, additionally, I mean, this, this uh, sort of, um, you know, this sort of like feedback I'm hearing where like, um, you know, we've got uh, like, e- even in this call, two of the four of us find different systems much more easy to use. Um, the way that we categorize information is highly dependent on culture. And this just kind of drives mm-hmm. that. And cultures are changing so rapidly among generations. Mm-hmm based on the online places we frequent, right? So, um, as, um, you know, like Sarah was mentioning, uh, AO3 feels like it's coming from a very millennial place mm-hmm. and like style of thinking, but Gen Z is not that much younger than us, yet mm-hmm. talk curation is so much different. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how we adapt to that in the future. Um, as you have these different groups that are all trying to be served by the same, you know, public libraries uh, who are expecting different ways of, you know, finding their information. Uh, They're coming at it from, you know, often completely differing perspectives on, uh, you know, like Sarah, both Sarah's you mentioned earlier, like the way that undergrads now are searching for things in, um, you know, in your academic library collection is a lot different than the way that we were searching for them when we were students and then the way that the system is designed for them to be able to find things. Um, So it's a, yeah, I think that fan categorization can be an interesting little microcosm um, for exploring just the broader changes uh, that are going on between even close generational cohorts, um, Mm -hmm. in the, in the age of like online searching. I think that really just points kind of platform wise to that exigency though, right? Like arc of a, of our own, um, really is 
meant for a, a holding container of things mm -hmm. that people want to be able to go back to, right? Whereas something like, and I, um, up front, I, I stay very far away from TikTok for very personal reasons. Um, I have cloistered myself in a research hole and I'm not allowed to look outside of it because I'm a, I'm, I'm a magpie. <laughs> so um, I can't get distracted until I finish the current project that I'm in. But <laughs> um, what I understand of TikTok in general as a platform is that it's constantly pushing new content in front of the most eyes mm -hmm. possible, whereas archive of our own is a uh, much, much more of what it calls itself an, an archive mm -hmm. where, you know, the, the stability and findability of specific items is privileged in the way that it's organized, right? So that algorithmic um, exigency is is radically different for the two things. So discoverability on TikTok is very important, but findability, two different things, right? Mm -hmm. um, discoverability is constantly seeing things that you may not have expected to see, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas findability is like a known item search, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, so, I think that's a, a huge difference. I know I I spend a lot of time on Instagram and unless I bookmark something into my own account, I can never go back and find it, mm -hmm. right? Even if I know the account that it came from, half the time it's really mm -hmm. hard because of the way that people push their content and because of the way that the Instagram algorithm populates my feed, you know, it's, it's very hard to find something if you saw it while you were scrolling and then two days later, you want to go and find that exact mm -hmm. thing, right? I yeah. think it's, um, I think it's really important to just to note that like AO3, like, I don't know, I don't know if it's actually correlated or not. Like it's very possible. It's just like more of a coincidental thing. Um, but Fan fiction is such a respite for like marginalized voices. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and queer, it's a very queer space, and a lot of slash going on over there. And that I feel speaks to like the notion of find of findability. I think also equates far more to visibility than discoverability does. Mm -hmm. um, you talked about pushing new content right up front, I think, right? Um, like that's what we're getting mm -hmm. first. And uh, you're not on TikTok, but like one of the big issues uh, with it, just in a general sense is that, you know, you'll get uh, like a black content creator and they'll do something. And then a white content creator will utilize what they've done do the same thing without crediting mm -hmm. them and then they will go mm -hmm. viral for it um and that becomes the discoverability without a way to like mm -hmm. credit, move backwards to the origin 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 origination i can't talk mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. whereas like there is no room for that given on ao3 uh, so to some extent, it's just a much more inclusive environment in terms of mm -hmm. tech authorship and writership and all of that. Right. Yeah. 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 Personalities are really far removed on AO3. Um, I feel like it's very work centric yeah. where mm -hmm. things like book talk, that is very um, creator centric, very curator centric. If we're talking about people putting together playlists, right? Um, where on AO3, that work is going to be forwarded. The author of it is going to be the one that you see most, not somebody who has put together a list of it. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, it's actually, it's well-researched that um, fanfic is, um, you know, like you said, it's a respite. It's a place for people in the queer community to be able to uh, mm -hmm. fear the fandoms that they love because mm -hmm. in um you know in a capitalist structure where these shows and these books are having to be pushed toward the broadest audience you know sometimes those voices can be silenced but 
um, in fanfic, when we're all just writing for each other, you can uh, you can write slash fic. You can write um, fic that you know puts pairings together that seem like they could be happening in the show, especially in shows where like queer baiting is a big issue, oh, yeah. where it's like uh-huh. they show, you know they hint at it so much, but they're never going to show it to you. Fanfic can be that place where uh-huh. fans finally express it. Fans finally give each other a place to see it and read it um, and enjoy that together. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I think also, it is like, I was just saying, Sarah, I'm thinking about like what you were saying about um, discoverability. Cause I think it's a different kind of like, cause like there's findability, I guess, I don't know if you like, like I think about like, if I go on, if I'm like, in a new fandom you know and I'm like I want I really want to go like read I want to go find like the hurt comfort slash fix mm-hmm. between these characters in the right in this fandom like I can get pretty specific right and like that makes like the the tagging schema and like the way that AO3 is organized and stuff like that's like would you call that I guess would you call that something would you call that discoverability or would you call that findability I'm or or using really really misused yeah terms, but I'm I'm well, thinking yeah. about discovery as much more like like just things passing in front of you that you didn't know were there whereas okay like, yeah mm-hmm. mindability is like following a path to an item that yeah. you're actually seeking like I'm looking right. for something specific even if it's not like that thing yeah mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. I'm yeah. thinking about like a Venn diagram right now and like discover yeah. that findability and visibility like an overlapping space and like mm-hmm. where these platforms land on it and it just yeah I keep thinking <laughs> I keep thinking like where I would put scout on that <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like there, I'm sorry I, I I mentioned that because of the tagging system um mm-hmm. and and in our search for our our library specifically but like they're sometimes the tagging is like so out of hand and sometimes it's just like so non-existent and it just doesn't you know it's based Wait, what system on, it's our eds okay gotcha um and i think lanessa that it's based on the subject headings that are existing in different records that come that from different sense. places yeah. um it's the same as like what imports into zotero if you notice that mm-hmm. like sometimes they are just you know you'll you'll import a short article and it'll have like 15 tags yeah. and you're like why does that even have that it's because of the metadata that is attached to that item in the record that you accessed mm-hmm. and it's okay. very um it's very messy mm-hmm. and you can actually yeah. you can find that happening on AO3 as well yeah. especially with works or um you know a uh, really what turned into like collections of work where each chapter is maybe a different fandom where they just uh, a writer might spam it with so oh many tags yes. yeah. that it appears in nearly everybody's searches but it 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 may not be it's very it. annoying you know I feel like that's <laughs> because I feel that, like, um like the hurt time. comfort tag oh. be there for a chapter that's about totally different characters than you want to read about right mm. and so not actually getting a hurt comfort fox Mulder, dana scully you're actually getting like hurt comfort um romy remy lebeau rogue um but <laughs> you were searching for you know one thing and and but it appears because of how you know the the user has taken advantage of that tag system mm-hmm. um, yeah. so that issue can come up with ao3 as well yeah I also I'm curious wanted to, know, to know what happens, Carrie, if you run it through that word cluster model that I use for my Instagram hashtags. You mean in vivo? Like uh, oh, it's social um, network analysis. Yeah, it's the it's a linguistics um, synonyms uh, modeling. It it it's um I can send you some information on it, but it's finding those hyponemic and hypernemic. Yeah, that's I would be interested in seeing that too. Yeah, because, to <laughs> because um, then you could sort of figure out what what things are actually con- contextually connected to each other mm-hmm. as far as your tagging system goes, 
and you could filter out the ones that are irrelevant, you know, the ones that are just lightly connected. Mm -hmm. You should go back. I'll send you Price's articles because she actually did social network analysis, which is part of why her data doesn't match up completely to what I would want to look at. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll send you her articles because I'll send you my stuff. Yes, that would be good. Yeah. All right. I think yeah. we've gone over time a little bit. Uh, but this is I'm so sorry I talked so long, but <laughs> this was, it was so great to get to discuss this with you and, um, to really have my people at this talk. Yeah. Talk about well, no gonna, apology necessary. It was lovely. Thank you so much, <laughs> Carrie. You. I'm going to stop recording okay. and conclude the presentation.